All right. Continuing on commercial free Monday, the world's biggest and richest hypocrites flying private to Dubai this week for the U.N.'s COP28 climate summit. Dubai <clears throat> burns a lot of energy, all that A.C. This uh, as a new study from Oxfam International revealing that the world's richest one percent emit about the same amount of carbon as the world's poorest two thirds meaning that 77 million elites in this world have produced as much carbon as 5 billion people that make up the bottom 66% of wealth on this planet. That is insane. The study also estimates it would take roughly 1,500 years for someone in the bottom 99% to produce as much carbon as the wealthiest billionaires do in a single year. So just remember that the next time John Kerry or Bill Gates even open their mouths and spew their nonsense. Mark Morano is the founder of ClimateDepot.com. He is also set to attend COP28 on Thursday. Alex Epstein is the founder and CEO of the Center for Industrial Progress. Good to have you both on. Alex, the Pope, King Charles, litany of globalists expected to attend. King Charles is a big climate zealot. I bet they spend 50,000 pounds a month heating his many homes. Probably. I mean, one, I have a different perspective on this rich people and emissions thing. I think what it shows is to be wealthy, you need fossil fuels. The fact that two thirds of the world is emitting so little CO2 is an embarrassment. They should be emitting more CO2 because there's no other way for most people to have a modern lifestyle. Exactly. And, and what these emissions are from is machines. So basically, do you want people to use machines to be productive and prosperous? Or do you want them to be poor and endangered because they live manual labor lives? So I would take from this Oxfam thing, hey, we need to be using more fossil fuels and or we need to be developing real alternatives. But instead, they want to ban fossil fuels and then mandate unreliable solar and wind. Yeah, I like that. That's that's actually a really good angle there. That, that makes perfect sense. Mark, do you, do you plan you're going to go to this thing? Are you going to call any of these people out? Tell, tell John Kerry nobody's going to listen to him until he moves into a small little studio apartment with very tiny, energy efficient windows. Then we'll start listening to all your nonsense. Well yeah, first of all, Alex is exactly right. And yes, I will be going. And sometimes you have access to these VIP figures. I was able to ask Harrison Ford a few years ago. He wanted uh, he was he was arguing for the whole U.N. agenda. And at the same time, he admitted he flew his private jet just to pick up a hamburger or his, his private plane <laughs> to pick up a hamburger. And his answer when I confronted him was he's now a vegan. So his yeah. past sins have been forgiven, his climate sins. Yeah. Uh, this is a this is the U.N. To, uh, COP28 UN Climate Summit. And make no mistake, the, that Oxfam report is important for one aspect. They are proposing for the rest of us the collapse with the net zero climate agenda of energy, collapse yeah. of energy, food, transportation. And yet none of the proponents of this, the UN former UN climate chief said he lived at 20,000 feet flying. John Kerry said restrictions on uh, uh, flying commercial is not good for quote, someone like me, unquote, because they they are like the old Soviet Politburo. They're the anointed ones. They're going to be not be subject to these uh, mandates which they're pushing. And yeah. make no mistake, COP28 is pushing the food agenda front and center. They're going yeah. after a 90 percent reduction in meat in the developed uh, in the Western world. Yeah, no, it's hey, Alex. I, that's that's my, my next topic. The, the impact of farming. Uh, is going to be one of the key topics this year. We, they're serious about limiting farmers' ability to produce food for the world to eat, which goes exactly to what you're saying. They, they're, they're trying to turn the world into a much more unsafe, much more unlivable place. Uh, you know, if, if they could implement, if the people that are at COP28 could walk out of there and implement their will on the entire world, I, how many billions of people would die over the course of the next couple of years? Well, one giveaway is if you ask some of these leaders, what do you think the ideal population is? Keep in mind, we're at about 8 billion. Mm -hmm. You know what the answer is? It's usually 1 billion or 500 million. Now, you think of how long that would take and how much totally forbidding people to have kids that would take to you know, get rid of that. I mean, and they're talking about timetables of 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. I mean, this is a movement that lusts after human death. 
and human depopulation. And if you look at the attack on, on food, I mean, the state of food, it has problems, but it is one of the greatest achievements in human history that we've taken a naturally impoverished planet that could barely feed hundreds of millions of people, and we can feed 8 billion people to the point where obesity is our biggest problem. This is a great achievement of machines and modern fertilizer, both of which come from fossil fuels. And their focus is not how do we keep that going and maybe even make it healthier and better. They want to destroy it. That's something. Mark Morano, final thoughts. Go ahead. Yeah, well, speaking of food, you know, when I go to these things, I need a food taster. This They have not been very open, these U.N. summits. I was actually uh, arrested by armed United Nations climate cops at one time in Marrakesh. I've been going to these for 20 years. Uh, this is a great reset summit, and the entire goal is about them gaining control of global transportation, global energy, and global food production. They want it to be decided by fewer and fewer companies and fewer and fewer government bureaucrats. That's what this is really all about. They want to be in charge of the entire shebang. Well said. Alex Epstein, Mark Morano, good to see you guys. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Thank you.